We got an update here on something I covered the other day relating to the BBC's plans to axe Land of Hope and Glory and Royal Britannia from the last night of the proms. They have done a U-turn of sorts because they will now play the patriotic songs just without the lyrics, which I guess is better than nothing but still a steaming pile of turd if you ask me. Now, they will blame social distancing when we know it's nothing to do with that, it's all to do with the virtue signalling nonsense they have been promoting over the past few months, vomiting out crap 24 hours a day. Well, a few media outlets have picked up on this and patriots have been calling them out on Twitter for this piss poor compromise when the songs should be sung loud and proud as they have been for about 130 years I think. Now, in what is a surprise to no one, we had Kahindi Andrews, the race baiting prick, calling them racist propaganda but that is hardly a shock at this point. So we will skip past that to a BBC insider who has come out shitting on the BBC from a great height for their white guilt. Because apparently the BLM bullshit has sent them into a panic like the snivelling shit weasels we all know they are. Now the Telegraph have picked up on a petition that is relating to this story which I will link down below if you want to sign it. But the petition itself tells you what it's about so I won't bother reading the article. We will look at the Mail Online's report on the BBC insider exposing them with the headline. Britannia gagged. Insider claims BBC's bungled decision to play last night of the proms anthems but not sing the racist words that offend the woke was taken by scared white guys in a panic. Which also explains why they're spending £100 million on 20% quotas to make sure they have enough black and ethnic minority people working there so they can appease the woke lunatics. A BBC insider has slammed the corporation's bungled decision to play Land of Hope and Glory and Royal Britannia without lyrics at the last night of the proms following a racism row. No, it is not following a racism row at all, it is just them pandering to woke losers as I've said. A source told the Times the BBC's handling of the programme at times felt like white guys in a panic trying to appease the Black Lives Matter movement because of the song's apparent links to colonialism and slavery. While the BLM movement ignores modern day slavery because obviously it's not being done by the right group of people. Adding to the countless evidence that it really doesn't give a shit about black lives at all and instead it's just a political movement trying to force change. The BBC last night said new orchestral versions of the hugely popular anthems would feature in the rousing finale of its concert next month. Neither will be sung even though a soprano will perform the national anthem Jerusalem and you'll never walk alone. There will be no live audience because of coronavirus restrictions and the BBC will likely get booed out of there. A BBC BBC source claimed Land of Hope and Glory and Royal Britannia would not be sung because we can't do it justice without a full choir and an audience to sing along, which is complete and utter tripe they would be able to do it perfectly fine. And let's be honest, as I covered yesterday, if 200 people can attend a wedding then you can get the orchestra in there to sing these patriotic songs about this country, it's not exactly difficult to justify is it? The insider insisted that the singing would return next year but the BBC's move was condemned as a complete cop-out last night and it is still happening this morning. Twitter is alight with people attacking the BBC for this. There's no reason they shouldn't have anyone singing, said arts commentator Norman Leverich. None of the government guidelines forbid it. Proving, as I said, the BBC are just copping out and using it as an excuse so they can appease the woke lunatics and piss-poor tosspots that we cunt off every single day of the week. The BBC have shown no ingenuity and no imagination. There's no reason the Albert Hall should be empty. 500 yards down the road, Cardigan Hall is putting on concerts with audiences. It has been, really, a season of dereliction by the BBC, a failure of imagination. No, their imagination is about appeasing woke losers like I've said. They don't want people in there because they don't want to sing these songs and that is the end of it. They know they could have people in there, there's nothing stopping them as it says above. This is literally so they can appease the Marxist movement, which is all this is really about. It's a complete cop-out. I'm afraid it's another of those really weak BBC moments and as far as the proms is concerned, it's an act of self-harm, which it is, I hope loads of people boycott watching it on the telly. Let their ratings go into the toilet and show them that this sort of shit is not on. It won't change what they do, but at least it shows them the people of this country do not support them. Father Marcus Walker, the rector at Great St Bartholomew's in London, also condemned the move. He tweeted, Hilarious that people addressing the BBC promising orchestral versions of Land and Hope and Glory and Royal Britannia as a retreat. It's nothing of the sort. 
its gut in the songs of their words and of their meaning. Conservative MP Michael Fabricant told the BBC Radio 4's Today programme this morning, I think it's all very sad. There are some lovely words in rural Britannia. It's not all about Britain not being slaves. You've got other nations not so blessed as thee, must in their turn to tyrants fall, while thou shalt flourish great and free. Isn't that lovely? The BBC made the announcement after reports that the organisers of the event wanted the songs dropped altogether because of their association with British colonialism. The songs are a part of the final night's finale when thousands of flag-waving promers traditionally pack the Royal Albert Hall. However, critics argue that the lyrics to Rule Britannia, including the line, Britain never never shall be slaves, are overtly racist given the UK's prominent role in the slave trade. No, saying Britain will never be slaves is in no way racist because it's not talking about another race, you complete and utter idiots. And also, the implication that some people could be slaves, well, there are current slaves now over in Africa and other parts of Asia. Why don't you go and have a look at them, you worthless bunch of tosspots? The 1902 lyrics of Land and Hope and Glory were reportedly inspired by Cecile Rhodes, which has obviously sent the left into complete shit fits. We don't care about that. I already covered the Finnish conductor who's trying to push this and the idiot that she is. We don't need to go into that either. Prime Minister and Oliver Dowden have got involved, yeah, of course they have. They would shut this shit down and make the BBC do what the country wants and play our patriotic songs. Boris Johnson is as weak as piss water and at the moment nothing but a traitor. In a bid to defuse the row, BBC bosses finally announced last night that the last night on September 12th would still feature familiar patriotic elements as we see earlier. And this here that you can see on the screen is that Kahindi Andrews toss pot sitting there moaning about how these are racist. I'm not going to bother playing it, you can see it playing in the background, he's calling them racist propaganda and all this nonsense. I ain't even giving him the time of day. Right, again on the back it's going to be patriotic elements such as Jerusalem and National Anthem, no, Rule Britannia, Land of Hope and Glory, National Anthem, then we're good. Uh, they're bringing new moments, capturing the mood of this unique time, so it's going to be full of a bunch of race baiting bollocks, you can guarantee that. And the rest of it is just the normal race baiting bollocks that we get from these people, I'm not even going to entertain it, I've gone over it a hundred times before, it's actually no different to anything we see two months ago. You might remember during the height of the BLM bullshit, they were all screaming about getting rid of Royal Britannia. Well, it seems the BBC actually took that to heart. And if this insider's words are true, then the white guys up in the BBC have all shit themselves and pandered to this woke bollocks, which is their normal position. I think you would agree. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>